Welcome back to Vigor. It's your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of the JSS. I have not forgotten about me saying I'm going to try to bring y'all some more games on Bottling Bridges. And yes, the loot is boosted. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have a fear of this map. Everybody has their fears of, you know, each map. At one point, it was Anakin. And you can check out the video where my first impressions are on that map. It's literally called Anakin, my first impressions. But when Bridal and Bridges was introduced and I came on this map for the first time and I hit that up arrow to reveal the size of the map, my anxiety shot up. And I don't think it'll ever come back down. Because here's the thing. The map is so damn big. It's huge. And anybody can be anywhere. Like you, okay, now with Broadland, no, with the batteries and Sagebrook, it's a small map. So you can expect people to be around the corner because there are only so many spots you can hide behind. But on Broadland Bridges, the entire map is huge you literally got a beginning middle and end so yes this map scares me that's why i tend not to play on it because i always get caught up from some random ass direction if you don't believe me check out check out my streams and by the way my streams are on my second channel and you can find the link to that second channel in the description of this video just so you know all right, so I bring out, there's a person right there. Y'all probably didn't see him, but as soon as I open the door, he stopped moving. And so I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna go prone. I'm gonna stand up, I'm not stand up, I'm gonna go on one knee and I'm gonna keep it moving. Got food, nice. I love food in the game and, real, and in real life. Got the chemicals. I don't use those in real life. Now, where did he go? Conclusion drawn. He's going for the container. As it is, right down there. Also, the detector is right down there. So, why is nothing happening? Where is he at? Okay. Don't panic. Get closer. But don't get too close. Because he's right there. And now he's no longer right there. You see, whenever you think something's about to happen and it doesn't happen, chances are you're about to walk into a trap or you're already trapped. Crazy, I know. But if I would have gone forward anymore, anymore I would have been dead because like that guy had the perfect freaking angle on both well no not really probably just the container not really the detector but we'll find out though we'll find out because oh I didn't mean to pick that up destroy destroy this no, no one actually cares goodbye okay I'm about to go and look at his body and for a split second you could see he had a good view of the area and delete the ammunition and we're good jet why do you delete the ammunition after you pick up that guy's body well loot that guy's body you see players and, and look somebody told me this in the comment section of one of my videos and i cannot recall who or what video but it makes sense it makes sense let's say you kill somebody and they have an 80, 80 yard 97 and you have uh, an SG-1 and an A-74 KSU on you. You kill them and you trade in your A-74 KSU for their 80 yard 97 and you, their, and you take their ammunition. The player that you are shooting at, the, their weapon took the same ammunition as the A-74 KSU for the sake of argument, let's say it's the S-82 sniper rifle. 
so you leave the body. Along comes Looter with a default skin, picks up the S-82 and the ammunition that you did not take from their body, and so now they're automatically dangerous. And so what if you're going for an airdrop and all of a sudden you get headshotted? Which won't happen because you're using an S-82, but just for a second argument. They killed you. Because you didn't take the ammunition from their body. Do you, you understand what I'm saying now? Look, I mean, I could really make a video about the Iceberg of Vigor. I could. But that video will probably be about 30 to 45 minutes long. And I don't know how I'm going to get the, the footage for that. I don't know how. It'll, it can definitely be a stream thing. Definitely could. Because I'll be talking in real time. But I don't... Yeah, don't, don't expect that video anytime soon. If not ever. And so, that's why you delete ammunition from players' bodies. You pick it up first, and you delete it afterwards. Now, I did a U-turn just now, because I did hear somebody use a detector. And so I'm like, maybe they're going to go for the container now? Maybe? And so I'm going to try to maneuver myself to get eyes on the container. But here's the thing. Just because they... You know, go for the detector. They, it doesn't always mean they're hunting you down. Maybe them themselves are already getting hunted down. And they're trying to figure out who's near them. And so, as I'm walking, crouch walking, across this bridge, loot this truck. I realize, they're not going for the container at all. Because normal people, well not really normal people, but... Most players will shoot off the locks on the container and make a huge behind disturbance. He's not doing that. So maybe he's seen one dot that was already too close to him. And so he bugged out. That could be the case too. You never know. But like I said, here's the thing about bottling bridges. It's so large. You don't know who is around what corner. And you see, that's why I'm always crouch walking across this map. It's one thing to be seen, but it's another thing to be heard. If I can mitigate one of those chances, or at least lessen one of those chances. Look at that. Hold on. That window's open. Why? But anyways, if I can mitigate one of those chances, then I'm going to do it. Make myself quieter at the expense of mobility? I don't mind. I don't mind. Loot is somewhat scarce. Well, I say scarce. It's spread out. It's here, but it's mad spread out. As we hear gunshots in the distance. So I don't mind giving up a little bit of mobility to maintain stealth. If not, a quiet, low-key presence. And so I decide, since they're not going for the container, I'm going to head over here. And I'm going to set up for the airdrop. Because you never know, I might get it. You never know, I might die. But I'm going to set up for it. And you see, here's a thing that I want to happen in this game too. If you have, let's say, 250 common crates, then you should trade them in for maybe one uncommon crate? I mean, maybe one common crate? No, wait. You should trade in 250 white crates for one green crate. You know what I'm saying? Gives you some kind of reason to keep grinding. Like a prestige level. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But that's just me being, you know, wishful. Now. The barred house, believe it or not, is that white house I'm walking toward. Now, just because a house has been looted, doesn't mean nobody's not nearby. And look how my camera changed just now. I heard somebody in that house. Somebody's in there. Now you see, my brain is in two different places. I gotta t stop talking to the plane. Okay, the plane's gone. My brain is in two different places. I want to see who made that car alarm go off over there. I want to see that. But I also don't want to get shot in the back from guy in that house. 
and right here, I'm hearing footsteps. They're faint, but I'm hearing them. You don't discount anybody until you know for sure that they're gone. Because somebody will attract somebody else, and then there goes a gunfight. And you don't want to be surprised when you hear a gunfight go off. As long as you can take out the surprise factor, the jump scare factor from everything, then you should be okay. But on the flip side of that coin, if you can put that jump scare factor, that, oh crap, I'm getting shot factor into your prey, into your opponent, into your potential prey, then that's like maybe half, if not one second to your advantage. And so that's what I'm trying to do to this guy who looted, who looted the car. But I don't know where he's at, so I'm going to, you know, disengage and not worry about him. I got bigger fish to fry, and one is inside that house to my left. And that's why you see me get closer. Because if I can hear him in the house, I can make plays off it. Off of the sound. But I also know that crouch walking on these rocks right here out in the open is pretty damn dangerous in and of itself. I know that. So that's why I go prone right here. I mean, the good news is I somewhat match the color of these rocks. It's cool. Or whatever. But the detector gets used. Do you think the guy who triggered a car alarm is now at the detector? It would make sense. Because he did walk in that direction. But it's not guaranteed. And so, I am just listening. I'm listening more than looking. And so I decide, if anybody's here, I'm going to get shot at. And I'm already waiting for it. You see, my camera is never still. I'm going to stop talking for a while. Watch this.
a couple weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, I made a video called The Biggest Killer. I'm gonna spoil it for you. In my experience, in my opinion, the biggest killer and vigor is greed. Yes, he got the kill. Yes, he deserved to loot him. But why would he loot him while he spotted on the map for everybody to see? You know what I'm saying? But let me recap. Let me recap. The most important thing you're probably thinking, Jet, why would you shoot that bush two different times? I'm not going to lie to you. I seen the bush moving, but I seen something stationary while the bush is moving. So I shot the bush. Nothing was in it. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Now, it pays to keep your camera keep your camera on 360 because if I didn't, I would have got killed from behind by that guy sneaking up on me. And as soon as I seen him, I knew I had to find cover. I was in the field. I had to find cover. I was hoping and praying he wasn't shooting at me as I was running, and he didn't. So I, while I seen him running toward cover, and I was already in cover with a perfect firing position, I took him out. Went, looted his body, then I heard somebody else. Now as they were running to the airdrop, I seen that third person up there on a the ridge, and I held my fire. That's real important. I held my fire. Because if I let them fight, they're going to fight. And the chance that just happened, the chance that just happened was somebody's going to kill somebody and they're going to try to loot each other. If the non-airdrop player killed the airdrop player, he's going to go to the airdrop and try to loot it. Who would it? But if the airdrop player kills the non-airdrop player, they, then... I was betting that he was going to run away, but he didn't. And that's what got him killed. You see, the main thing I want you to take away from this video is your visual, your eyesight, how quickly you can gather, process, gather data and process it and come up with the right decision or come up with a decision is, is vital. Mad vital if i would have fired any earlier any later this encounter would not have ended this way and yes it's hard to see in radiation but if you watch one spot and you see somebody running toward it then you know if you just aim at that one spot they're going to go to it i hope y'all learned something from this video Peace.